pretty spooky time globally. I mean, this is a big macro global problem. Interest rates are going higher and they're pulling liquidity out of the system so people can't spend money. And so that's causing this huge crisis. And I don't think people realize that bad news is good news. Robert Kiyosaki, the renowned author of the influential book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, has once again drawn attention with a surprising market prediction that carries significant implications. Kiyosaki's forecast revolves around the potential for a real estate market crash, offering intriguing insights for both investors and prospective home buyers. Kiyosaki's expertise in financial markets has led him to consistently advocate for seizing unique opportunities for wealth accumulation during economic downturns. While he has previously foreseen the collapse of various financial markets, his approach to navigating turbulent times remains steadfast. Despite the impressive gains witnessed in the U.S. stock market throughout 2023 and the encouraging gross domestic product GDP figures, Kiyosaki cautions that the current economic landscape may not be as bright as it seems. He highlights the stock market surge, attributing it to the increase in the U.S. debt ceiling following President Biden's actions. Kiyosaki's tweet underscores his concern. Don't they know the stock market is up because Biden raised the debt ceiling? America's debt is going up. So the stock market is going up. He boldly asserts America is broke. Kiyosaki's apprehensions regarding America's mounting debt crisis align with the recent actions of credit rating agency Fitch Ratings. Shortly after his tweet, Fitch downgraded the United States' long-term foreign currency issuer default rating from its prestigious AAA rating to AA+. Fitch cited expected fiscal deterioration over the next three years, a high and growing general government debt burden, and an erosion of governance as primary factors contributing to their decision. While some experts anticipate a gentle landing for the U.S. economy, Kiyosaki maintains a more cautious and skeptical perspective. His insights remind us of the importance of considering diverse viewpoints and staying vigilant in a financial landscape that can change rapidly. As investors and individuals planning for their financial future, it's essential to remain informed and prepared for various economic scenarios. When interest rates go higher, then it becomes impossible for the consumer to be able to afford Correct. to borrow money at the higher interest rates. So that kills the demand and people just have to stop buying. In terms of quantitative tightening, they are literally taking $95 billion a month out of the financial system and destroying it. $95 billion adds up over a year, that's $1.1 trillion, or about 13% of all the dollars. The big round recently was because of the COVID pandemic, all the governments incurred an enormous trillions of dollars worth of debt, and the, their central banks helped finance that government borrowing by creating trillions of dollars. And that pulled us out of the COVID depression and set off a boom with all of the new money they created in, especially in terms of asset prices. But now, but, and it also caused high rates of inflation. Now to fight the inflation, the central banks have increased interest rates very significantly. And even more importantly, I think, while they are doing the, instead of creating money as they were doing through quantitative easing, now they're doing the opposite. Now the Fed is destroying $95 billion every month through quantitative tightening. And that's sucking the, liquidity out of the financial markets. It's like, just, you know, imagine a ballroom full of investors and suddenly the Fed starts taking the air out of the ballroom. Uh, at first they don't notice, but then it becomes hard to breathe and they all run to the exits where liquidity is getting tight and it's probably going to be very hard on the financial assets in the months and quarters ahead. So this is, rather than pumping money into the system, making everything appreciate, now they're sucking the money out of the system we're getting to the tipping point where, where I'm afraid that asset prices, especially the stock market, which is very expensive, but other asset prices as well are likely to, to suffer and perhaps take quite a big tumble because they're really very expensive compared to their normal levels. So they're very vulnerable to a correction. Right. What that means uh, for those who on the macro side is the when the Fed creates money, it puts money kind of into the system via our big banks like JP Morgan. Wells Fargo and all that. And then you and I walk up and businesses walk up to JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, and your local bank, down, your regional bank down the street, and then you borrow money. So money comes into existence via debt. 
when the Fed takes money out of the system, that means there's no debt being created. That means no money is entering the system. And where it shows up right now is credit card debt is at an all-time high because mom and pop don't have any money. And plus inflation due to this Green New Deal stuff that Biden's doing by cutting off the oil systems in America. It's crushing America right now. So credit is going out and the economy is crashing as we speak. And I think uh, Powell and his friends are laughing all the way to the bank because they're not putting money back into the system. Is that fairly accurate on the macro side there? Robert Kiyosaki also sounded the alarm of the state of the global economy and financial markets. His recent concerns revolve around the Federal Reserve's response to the surging inflation, and he took to Twitter to express his apprehensions. Kiyosaki's tweet warned that raising interest rates could trigger a devastating chain reaction, affecting stocks, bonds, real estate, and the U.S. dollar. He even went on to highlight the potential vulnerability of the one quadrillion derivatives market, a staggering sum that underscores the magnitude of the issue at hand. While the Federal Reserve did not raise interest rates during its September meeting, it did issue a cautious warning that rate hikes may be on the horizon, with the expectation of elevated rates persisting for at least another year. This stance contrasts with the hopes of some who anticipate rate cuts in the near future. Fed Chair Jerome Powell firmly stated the rate cuts are not part of the Fed's base case scenario, emphasizing the central bank's commitment to a hawkish stance. Kiyosaki's warnings about financial instability are not new. He has been vocal about the impending crash of various financial assets, including stocks, bonds, real estate, and the U.S. dollar. Just last week, he discussed the looming threat of a crash lending as banking bailouts became necessary following the collapse of major banks like Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank. Kiyosaki even referred to the U.S. dollar as fake money, raising concerns about its long-term stability. In addition to these dire predictions, Kiyosaki foresees a global economic collapse with potential bank runs frozen savings, and billions looming on the horizon. He has previously stated that he anticipates a broad market crash, with soaring bankruptcies, rising unemployment, and an increase in homelessness. To prepare for these uncertain times, Kiyosaki advised individuals to take proactive steps. He encourages financial education and suggests his cash flow board game, which employs the Montessori method of learning, emphasizing the importance of hands-on experience and understanding financial principles. Moreover, he and his wife recommended seeking out coaches and mentors as a shortcut to learning and navigating the complex world of finance. Kiyosaki's warnings are stark reminders of the potential financial challenges ahead, and he has not shied away from emphasizing the gravity of the situation. He even suggests that the impending real estate crash could surpass the magnitude of the Great Recession of 2007-2009, reinforcing the need for individuals to be prepared and well-informed in these turbulent economic times. Yes, they've hike, increased the interest rates to make it more difficult for people to borrow. They want people to borrow less and spend less so there'll be less demand and that will cause inflation to fall. And they also want to take away some of this new money that they created during the pandemic, also to make liquidity conditions tighter and to bring down the inflation. So the companies can't push up their prices because if they do, they won't be able to sell their products. So the demand drops and then the companies either sell less or they begin to reduce their prices. And that's how the inflation comes back down again. Interest rates are higher. They can't borrow so that that's less money coming into the system. Plus they're QTing it, quantitative tightening it. They were drawing money out of the system. And then suddenly you see businesses start to fail because mom and pop don't have any money because they're maxed out on their credit card. I mean, that's kind of the that's the macro system there. That's right. But what what we've seen up until really right now is the economy has been surprisingly strong. And the reason why it's been surprisingly strong is because the government handed out so much stimulus during the pandemic, roughly five trillion dollars. And the Fed financed that by creating five trillion new dollars and essentially financed the whole thing. And by st sending out stimulus checks to the Americans, suddenly they had a lot more cash. And this was, you know, this is not small change we're talking about. This was an enormous transfer of, of wealth, essentially from the government, or you could say future generations, to the present generation, giving them a, I mean, this was spending almost like on a wartime basis. 
You know, when the government has a war, it spends enormous amounts of money, and that makes the economy boom because of all the government spending. Well, this is almost spending on a warlike basis, and it's carried the economy through right up until the most recent quarter. The most recent GDP was the GDP was up 2.4 percent, much higher than everyone had been expecting. But I think we're getting to the tipping point now, within the next couple of quarters, where this is going to go into reverse because of the higher interest rates and because the Fed is is destroying uh, almost $100 billion every month and taking that out of the financial markets. Student loan debt is $1.7 trillion, is the number one asset America has today. So America is getting, is the American economy is being supported by kids going to school, paying, the, I mean, they take out student loans those loans, I wouldn't touch. I mean, I, I, Kim and I have a lot of debt, but we, I would never touch a student loan. And we're getting so desperate, we're screwing our students now. I get to see what I can do next, because what happens when those stimulus checks came out, you know, they had those goofy guys that they were buying AMC and some other really stupid stocks. They were just jacking these stock prices through the roof because all the young people thought they were Warren Buffett or some. Yeah. And what Kim and I bought with our stimulus check is we bought gold and silver. When there's bad news, there's always good news. Always remember that, because when those freaking idiots were buying GameStop and AMC, and they thought they were Warren Buffett or something, or Donald Trump, I don't know who the heck they think they were, they're idiots. So the good news is, there's a big crash coming. That's the good news. You know, the question is, is it gonna be bad news for you or good news for you?